Nobody ever goes near Silent Lake, and people know better than to trespass on their land. Everyone avoids that body of water, even in summertime. Mothers warn the children about their risks, teens dissuade each other from partaking in late-night skinny dips. It's for a good cause. Silent Lake is a dangerous place to swim in. Many people have drowned in it. Seventy-five deaths in a couple hundred years. There have been reports of kids and teens, and sometimes the naturally drunk homeless men falling victim to its waters since the natives, who used to call this region their home, we don't want anymore. Silent Lake doesn't appear to be harmful at first glance. The surface is always smooth and always calm. There are no waves that disrupt the deep blue plain, so flat and clear that the sky is reflected off of it. There's a bunch of fish, too. It would have been the picture-perfect vacation destination, but it isn't. No one goes into that lake to swim or fish. I mean, there are some folks, people who moved here from the city, and rowdy daredevil teens who do, but they learn their lesson soon enough. Silent Lake is too calm, too quiet. Sometimes... The animals prowling in the woods that surround it stop howling and chirping. They all go out. It's so silent that our heads start pounding and our ears start ringing. We never have the courage to break the silence, this void. We know well enough what happens to those who dare be too loud while in the presence of the water. We don't want to be dragged down into the cold dark depths by the hands of those who've learned. The lake is deathly silent, and it'll do anything to keep itself that way. As my breathing slowed, my heart relaxed, and my mind cleared, I began my song, the sweetest melody combined with my nectar-like voice. The sound created was like none other, a symphony of the gods, as I would like to call, such harmony. Unfortunately, the serenity would not last. Something was watching from afar, a creature so hideous, so vile, so terrifying that whoever laid their innocent eyes on it would cower in the most paralyzing fear. This creature's eyes shone a bright yellow in the moonlight. Its unkempt feathered wings stood at the ready to take into the night, and its filthy blood-coated talons that had taken so many lives were ready to pounce the next victim. From where I was, everything seemed peaceful. It's as if the universe had finally achieved a motionless state. But this was strange, as I did not hear anything else but my own melodic symphony. I was unable to sense the demon approaching from behind. I paid for this ignorance. As the demon crept up behind me, I finally felt that something was off. I looked over my shoulder only to see it swoop down toward me from above. It was in this moment that all calmness left me and a tremendous fear took its place. My pupils dilated as adrenaline flooded my system. I started sprinting for my life as I dodged hurdles and obstacles. I could almost feel the creature's claws trying to grab at my flesh. When I almost tripped and nearly fell, I felt the most excruciating pain. One of the talons managed to catch my skin. Even with this pain, I kept running and running, hoping for a miracle to save my life. I felt every drop of sweat that found its way into my freshly made wound. I cringed as my back burned with ever more ferocity. My end finally came as I lost my footing and tumbled to the ground. I had one final look at this monster as the talents closed their grasps around me. 
It cut into me like a sharpened saw through wood. No amount of struggling could free me from the monster's grasp. I stopped moving and accepted my fate. For what could I do? I was a mere cricket, but was caught by an owl. The wind has fooled us. Nice breeze, huh? Manny said. I would lived in the city where cool weather, such as the wind, was uncommon. Because of this, most were rather accepting of it. Nobody took any sort of caution or notice as the wind began to make itself at home, making its light conditions more and more apparent. It had corrupted the city with its calm, relieving charm, turning the unfamiliar touch into a welcomed pleasure. Once it had taken a hold of the land, it began to take its real form. The wind has irritated us. The usual day's breeze had turned itself into a constant pest. It would always blow objects over and carry away personal belongings with a tight tug. It was nothing dangerous or harmful, but there were moments that many began to question its place, becoming more of an unwelcome visitor. We hadn't seen calm, windless weather in a good number of weeks, which started to make some worry that we were going through a form of climate change. Those who studied the wind's accumulation urged everyone not to worry, that this was most likely a series of small storms that will pass soon. We should have left there. I should have left even sooner. The wind has controlled us. The gentle breezes had disappeared. What was left of the winds were its constant, powerful gales. I saw this when some decided to try to leave the city. Something about it had seemed unnatural. The gusts and gales seemed to be consistent, as it were more of a conscious spirit than just a heavy, chaotic weather. When everyone was indoors, safe from its forces, it seemed to calm down sometimes going back to what appeared normal. The moment when one would try to go out of the town, the wind had returned. With power enough to sometimes blow vehicles off the road, this kept many in fear. Weather channels and reporters urged everyone to stay in shelter. It was beginning to look more and more like a hurricane of sorts. It still didn't seem right, even for a severe storm. The winter scared us. The fear of the wind began with the experience of one man. He had weighed his car down, confident that it could resist the forces of the wind and make it out of the city safely. When all seemed to be calm, not a single breeze in the air, he ran for his vehicle. Before he could even reach the door, the wind returned. It didn't blow him away. It more so began to cut his skin, as if... One had dragged lines of blades across his arms, legs, and face. He managed to make it back indoors before his injuries got too serious. This was mentioned on the final news broadcast in the city. And then we lost power. I got a message on the phone saying that rescue teams were on the way, that we'd be saved as long as we stayed indoors. I wish that had been true. The wind has mutilated us. My mind and memory are scarred. I had nightmares from what I saw the next few days. I wasn't even sure if I could call it wind anymore. Many ran outside, believing it had vanished, only for it to return when they were left defenseless. It cut them to the bone. The wind didn't immediately disintegrate its victims, but instead killed them slowly. I watched as others attempt to run from the shelters in their clothes and skin. The muscles were stripped away from them. Every last piece of flesh was ripped from their bones until nothing was left but bloody, dark, red skeletons. Couldn't bear to watch their suffering anymore. I boarded my window at that point, but I still heard the screams. The screams would go on, 
go on for intervals for days and nights. The wind had destroyed us. I had resorted to hiding, occasionally peeking out through the slit in my boarded windows. I don't know if there are any others left in the city to look for. After others finally stopped trying to run, the wind had started to look for us. This sounds crazy, but I actually felt that it was some sort of living being at that point. It began to make its way into the homes and buildings. It would find one looking outside into the calm streets, and then it would move in, shattering the windows and cutting its victim like a knife. Since I had stopped looking at my windows, I don't think it ever saw me, but the screams of the others had gone silent. The wind had left us. I had run out of options. I was running out of food and water. I wasn't sure if rescue was coming at all or if it had been destroyed a while ago. I decided I was just going to step outside. Let the forces of the wind take me. As death was going to be eventual. As I opened the door and stepped outside, I was greeted with an alarming calmness. Outside was silent. I didn't feel so much as a breeze on my skin. I wasn't sure if the forces were toying with me or not, so I walked the ruined streets for a while. The streets were lined with broken glass, toppled cars, and scraped bones and skulls. There were sections of walls that had been completely painted with blood almost in an organized manner. After almost an hour of no activity, no signs that the winds were still there, it seemed to me that it had vanished. It had assailed the city completely, only to leave after I heard everyone silenced. Crazy as it may be, I only have one speculation as to what could have transpired. The wind was... In some strange way, some twisted way, something living. It had come to my city with only the intent to massacre. And it had killed off every individual it could find. It never found me. So I suppose that makes me the lone survivor. I'm not joyful, though. I'm terrified more so than ever. All because of a single question. If this is a living creature, and it's finished its desires here, where has it gone to now? <laughs>